As the Israel-Gaza hostilities enter 35th day today, some 80,000 Palestinians left Gaza's northern area in the past 24 hours. Thousands of Palestinians have been trudging past Israeli tanks and decomposing corpses along Salah al-Din, the only exit route for civilians escaping an intensifying siege of northern Gaza. Meanwhile, in a welcome move, Israel has announced a four-hour pause in strikes every day to facilitate the movement of Palestinians into safer locations. Good evening, I'm Amar Singh Pradhan and these are the headlines of the hour. Government data say about 100,000 houses in earthquake hit Jazakut and Bazan to be reconstructed. Difficult geographical terrain poses problems for rebuilding. Indian encroachment continues unabated at Nepal-India border. Thus, Gaza land in Kanchanpur's border blacked out by Indian authorities. Israel military eye hospitals in Gaza, Arab nations unhappy with the U.S. for their support for Israel. And South Africa to against Afghanistan win the match by five wickets. The earthquake that has struck Jazarkud with its epicenter in Ramidada last Friday has displaced 67,174 people of 9,186 household in the district. According to the Jazarkud District Disaster Management Committee, 9,794 houses have been completely destroyed, while 24,707 houses have sustained parcel damages. The chief district officer of Jazarkot, Suresh Sunar, said that relief is being distributed in all local levels of the district based on damages and losses. Likewise, four government offices in the district headquarters, Kalanga, have been completely destroyed in the earthquake. The Jazarkot Darbar, where the district administration office was located, land survey office, building of district coordination committee and land revenue office have been completely destroyed. 46 government offices across the district have been partially damaged, while 173 schools have been completely damaged. The chief of education development and coordination unit Ramesh Malla said that additional 408 school buildings have been partially damaged. Things are yet to get back to normalcy in Jazarkot and adjoining districts following the November 3rd earthquake last week. About 37,000 houses in Jazarkot have developed cracks and in need of immediate reconstruction. The government also needs to carry out reconstruction works in the earthquake-affected districts of Rukum West, Bajang and Salyan. Our correspondent Ramesh Dhamala alongside camera person Sam Sresta report from the ground zero that due to the difficult geographical structures this time the reconstruction works might be a case of easier said than done. The biggest worry for the earthquake affected population is regarding the fragile condition of their houses. Majority of houses in Jazarkot are deemed dangerous for living. The victims at the same time have already cautioned the authorities looking after reconstruction not to indulge in any political and financial benefit. As per the government data, 9,794 houses in Jazarkot have been completely destroyed in the earthquake, while 24,707 houses are awaiting reconstruction. Likewise, in Rukum West, 16,770 houses have been completely destroyed, while 10,000 houses are partially damaged. Meanwhile, in Bajang and Salyan, the government needs to reconstruct some 100,000 houses. It had taken over two years for the government to construct some 800,000 houses damaged during the 2015 April earthquake. 
Apart from a difficult geographical terrain, the Karnali region is also likely to face the scarcity of adequate human resource as most of the youths have been working abroad. Even as the loss of lives can not be recovered, there is a call on the three tiers of the government to speed up the issue of reconstruction of Jazarkot and adjoining districts. The Nepali side has condemned the Indian authority for blacktopping the road section up to the border pillar in Kanchanpur. The Indian side started blacktopping the road section from the 805th border pillar in Gadachauki of Kanchanpur's Bhimdatta municipality from last week. The local residents have condemned the move by Indian authority that had caused a number of obstructions while Nepal had made efforts to construct various structures including roadway on its land. The Indian side that had been obstructing Nepal's effort to repair roads in the bordering areas has started blacktopping road up to the no man's land against international provisions. Meanwhile, the road section on the Nepali side wears a dilapidated look. The Indian Border Security Force SSB had been preventing Nepal from repairing the no man's land. India was bound to correspond with the Nepali authorities before blacktopping the road section in the no man's land. Likewise, it was illegitimate for India to cause obstruction in Nepal's development works in its own bordering territories. Experts have attributed India's move as an effort to encroach Nepali land. Controversies in majority of the bordering territories from Mechi to Makali persist due to wrong strip map. The Indian side has been encroaching ne Nepali land at various places in Kanchanpur's Pyaratal, Baradev and Dodahara Chandani. An innocent Nepali national Govinda Gautam had died due to the dispute regarding the Indian side's obstruction while Nepal tried to construct Calvert in Ananda Bazar. The Indian side has also prevented Nepali authorities from blacktopping up to 1.5 km road section in Pyaratal, while it has also been preventing locals in Budhal from farming in their own land. Nepali media has raised the issue of India's encroachment of Nepali land on several occasions. However, the state mechanism has remained indifferent towards the issue. The country has recorded 365.34 billion rupees of remittance within the first three months of the ongoing fiscal year. According to the Nepal Rashtra Bank, the amount has increased by 30 percent compared to the same period last year. As per the reported on the country's current financial and commercial condition published by NRB earlier today, increase in remittance has been recorded. Remittance had increased by 2.81% during the same period last year as the country had received 281 billion rupees in remittance. The latest data show that 113,000 have acquired work permit for foreign employment this fiscal year, while 49,297 have renewed their permit. Meanwhile, 32.92 billion rupees have been spent for students studying abroad. Likewise, 17.89 billion rupees had been spent on foreign visits during the same period last year. Income through tourism has increased by 51.3% this fiscal year as a total of 17.02 billion rupees has been collected within three months. The amount collected during the same period last year was 11.24 billion rupees. The country's balance of payment has been recorded at 99.08 billion rupees, which was 12.43 billion during the same period last year. Likewise, foreign exchange reserve, which was limited to 1 trillion 539.36 billion rupees last fiscal year, has increased by 6.7%. Nepal's foreign exchange reserve has been measured at 1 trillion 643.09 billion rupees at the end of the Nepali month of Assos. And in our public voice segment, we have asked in several provinces regarding ways to make digital platforms safe and dignified. Let's take a look at what they have to say. गलत 
नागरिक स्तर में यह के लिए प्रयोग होने नहीं वास्तव में हम जो मूलुक नबुझे हो कि भाई लग साइबर क्राइम को जो न्याय को काम हो तो हेने मत राजधानी में मैं भैर तेल तो संबंध पैला मानी को सटीक रिटो छरी तो होने प्रदेश में प्रदेश प्रदेश स्तरीय उसे बना पर्व जन चेतना फैलाव पर्च राज्य अलग कड़ा भाई कड़ा कारवाई करने सरकार ने सामजिक संचाल मर्यादित बना को निगरानी बढ़ाने पर्ला होना सकता भी छाइनी सरकार ने इस बंद कर दिए बढ़िया में ठाँच सरकार ने आचार संहिता बना पर्च सोलह वर्ष भाग टलका चलान दि सर्वप्रथम सरकार ने नीति लिया पर्च रामी सब नीति को पालना करूँ पर्च And now time for our segment Public Pulse, where it texts us with their opinion. Public Pulse. And let's take a look at a response to yesterday's question. And yesterday we had asked you why is the government directive about including local food in the lunch provided for students not followed? Your options are option A. Twelve percent voted for option A. It's expensive. Eighty percent voted for option B. Commission game. And eight percent voted for option C. Not aware. And here is today's question. And the question is, why is there delay in the appointment of justices? Your options are option A, issues with power sharing; option B, procedural hassles; and option C, no right candidate. The voting is on. Type in a W S selector option A, B, or C and send it to three four double zero one to share opinion with us. And let's move on to international update. The UN High Commissioner for Human Rights said that Israel must take immediate measures to protect Palestinians in the occupied West Bank as they find themselves targeted by more violence since the Israel-Hamas war erupted last month. Volker Turk said at least 176 Palestinians including 43 children and one woman had been killed in incidents involving Israeli security forces since the beginning of October. At least eight Palestinians had been killed by Israeli settlers. Before the start of the Gaza war between Israel and the Islamist group Hamas on 7th of October, it was already the deadliest year on record for Palestinians in the Israeli-occupied West Bank, with about 200 killed. The worsening violence in the West Bank has fueled concerns that the Palestinian territory could become a third front in a wider war, in addition to Israel's northern border, where clashes with Lebanese Hezbollah forces have taken place. Israel has vowed to destroy Hamas and said it has also been conducting counter-terrorism operations against militants from the group and other Palestinian armed factions in the West Bank. Over the past 18 months, Israeli troops have killed hundreds of Palestinians, hardened militant fighters, stone-throwing youths, and uninvolved civilians, and made thousands of arrests across the West Bank. In the same period, dozens of Israelis have been killed in attacks by Palestinians. Sports news. And on to domestic football. The football governing body in the country, ENFA, has announced the national squad. Team Nepal are taking on UAE on 16th November next week in the second round away match under the uh, World Cup qualifiers. Kiran Kumar Limbu has been retained as the captain of the national team by coach Vincenzo Alberto Anis. Deep Kargi and Abhishek Baral are the two other custodians in the team. Sunny Shrestha, Rohit Chand, Anjan Rai, Ashish Chaudhary, Amrit Shrestha, Eric Bista, and Chiring Lama are the are in the defense likewise midfield will be under the command of Nissan Hamal Manish Dangi Kritish Rathan Chunju and uh, Sesang Angbede while Yogesh Gurung has been included in the place of injured Ananta Tamang likewise Anjan Bista Ayush Galan Jilaspi Jankarki Hisub Thapaliya and Sanjeev Bista will be in the forward line Nepal take on UAE on 16th of November followed by the match against Yemen on 21st November And those were our latest headlines. Up next is news in Nepali. Good night.